Hi all, let's have a look at another amazing game in the chess nutshell. This is actually of historical importance actually. This was in the amazing London tournament of 1851. It was the first international tournament. I've just got some notes here on Wiki actually. There's a dedicated page on Wiki for the London 1851 chess tournament. Uh, so it was actually conceived and organized by Hans uh, Staunton. And you have the best players in Europe uh, coming and it's actually a knockout format so this is part this game is part of the match between Adolf Anderson and Howard Staunton uh, in the um, before the final so semi-final match Howard Staunton was fortunate in the previous game to get a checkmate uh, Adolf Anderson had actually a winning movement instead allowed a mate in one you can see in the previous video on this channel Let's have a look. So Adolf Anderson probably being a bit more careful in this game. We see e4, e6, French defense. Yeah, pretty solid. So no king's gambit. d4, g6. Hyper modern from Hound Staunton, but it's kind of not played that much here. G6. Fundamentally, it yeah, it's not a popular move at all. Usually d5 the French defense. G6 is adding to dark square weaknesses basically. But uh, he likes to fear Chateau. Bishop d3 from Anna Fenson, Bishop d7, Bishop e3. So this duo, it's interesting. White isn't committing any knights yet. And it's able to support the center with you know c3 here as he does. And then we get a kind of Yeah, this is early aggression threat, but <laughs> is it a bit doubtful pawn hunting so early white gets a big position it seems here already after rook c1 there's dangerous threats like knight b5 very very provocative play by Howard Staunton maybe he's like delighted about the previous game <laughs> the amazing one it's a big wind up this game knight a6 can he really get away with this position knight b5 threatening things like d5 and e5 maybe for knight d6 and we see another great developing move bishop f8 <laughs> Hout Staunton really did play some amazing games honest but uh, maybe he wasn't always that consistent in his openings uh, quality here this seems a, a very bad position to play from uh, if we look at this position knight e7 might be uh, the best you know d5 it is scary uh, for d6 and knight c7 uh, m m stuff like that but maybe check and then just going back here to be annoying and if both sides castle it's it's a clear advantage to white but uh, it may be better than this bishop f8 we see castling d6 d5 white has a very pleasant position and in fact is exploiting the weaknesses now with bishop d4 e5 very committal pawn structure from black gaining a tempo now I'm trying to blast through this pawn chain very difficult position for black f6 very bad uh, concession this f file yep queen a4 fretting double check now here actually there's a move which turns out to be absolutely crushing it wasn't played bishop b4 but analysis shows technical analysis shows I wonder if you can guess it. There's a really crushing move in this position. You'd think that white should be able to crush black because it's a really lack of development. There's only like two pieces developed. There's a lot of weaknesses here. Can you actually find the most crushing move just as a technical exercise? You might want to pause the video. I'll give you five seconds just to pause the video and you want to analyze the position. There's an absolutely crushing move. So five seconds starting from now. Okay, I know that was more than five seconds fiddling around there, but the move is Queen A3. It's it seems to be crushing in all variations. I'll, I'll show you an example. Knight C5, Rook takes F8, actually knocks out this kind of chain. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say pawn chain. This piece and pawn chain. I don't know if that's such thing as this undermines the piece and pawn chain basically because after Knight takes D6, yeah, that was holding that. That was holding that. It's all collapsing. Now here, in fact, the idea here technically is check, 
Uh, now, if king e7, this is amusing, rook f7, checkmate. So king g7, let's go with king g7. We have check. And the really crushing move here, I wonder if you can spot the really crushing move here. Okay, bishop a5, hitting the queen. Now say, say queen h4, queen takes d3, and basically the king's getting hunted down. Yeah, <laughs> if b6, um, actually bishop d2 is really strong, and queen takes, actually bishop e, queen, queen takes d3, yeah, it's, it's uh, showing that really the opening play was a bit bankrupt. In fact, I um, yeah, just just to uncover an attack on on the knight with tempo. That's that's pretty nifty and get back over here as well with with multiple threats and stuff. Uh, so this this is really really crushing lines. Uh, just just to show you again, instead of knight c5, say queen e7, bishop b4, and it's very difficult. Knight takes check, taking the rook. So that's that's horrible. Bishop c8. We have bishop takes e5 here because of that coordination on f8. Yeah, it just seems queen a3 is absolutely crushing. But anyway, Anson he played bishop b4. It's along the same lines. It's just not as emphatic. The exploitation of undermining the piece and pawn chain. I'm going to start calling it a piece and pawn chain. Trying to undermine this piece and pawn chain. It's not as emphatic as queen a3 it seems. Uh, so we have knight h6. Not sure knight takes b4 is that much better. This is very dangerous uh, with knight c7 check threatened among other things. Uh, so yeah this looks awkward knight h6, king h1. Knight f7, now queen a3. So yeah, there is an interest in undermining at d6. And in fact, now, good move. Can you see what white plays? He is undermining this piece and pawn, Jane, with knight takes d6, winning a pawn there. And it's quite damaging to black's position. Black can't castle here. Now, black could of castles and given up b7 but actually knight d6 was played holding up b7 at the cost of not being able to castle for a while queen a5 h5 uh this is you know maybe <laughs> maybe promising some sort of attack but we see actually rook f8 here a6 now this is a really interesting move played, really, really powerful. Engines really approve of this move, and it shows the power of Anderson uh, in this sort of position with the king in the center. He strikes clinically here with this next move, at move twenty-eight, showing how strong he is. Uh, really, he's quite good tactically, <laughs> not bad at all. If I give you five seconds, starting from now, white play. Okay. Knight d4, threatening knight e6. Now, if it's taken, it wasn't, then e5 is really crushing because if it takes, then there's rook e1. Queen supporting the rook. If the knight moves, then e6. So, black uh, kind of ignored that. He played rook c8. I mean, there does seem to be a promise of you know, a faint promise of the back row being weak, but with D, the D three bishop covering F one, faint. <laughs> Knight E six, Rook takes C seven, Rook takes, Rook F seven. Now we see quite a dangerous move. Queen B six threatening to get round here, like this sometimes. Rook F six, as though there might be taking on E six soon. Well, maybe with not the bishop, but with the rook. But that wasn't played here after h3. We see g5, so aggression, trying to maybe open up lines. But now the queen bounces back, hitting e5. Yeah, that knight on e6 is at least making it easier 
to hit e5 it's not protected by anything knight b5 hitting the rook that's taken and now queen takes e5 yeah this is this is pretty nasty this position for black's being structurally compromised king still in the center h4 is tried rook takes b7 yeah this looks nasty getting round here check now queen f6 forcing moves now check d6 check it's all over Barn the shouting check takes the queen takes on g5 it's murder check queen e7 crushing win there from Adolf Anson not bad tactically actually even though queen a3 was crushing yes this this was a crushing move earlier queen a3 but the move knight d4 kind of redeems white's tactical strength brilliant move knight d4 and and other stuff around that so a very nice game from Adolf Hansen in this very critical tournament this was to establish uh, the best player in Europe basically so this is the uh, mini match in the semi-final this knockout structure a fantastic tournament to study actually to see the styles at the time hope you enjoyed this one at least from a historical perspective as well as maybe a technical comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much